Hiya. Welcome to LSB Feasters Radio Channel, where we keep great radio from the past alive. And today, we are playing some audio from Doug Tract, better known to many as the Grease Man. He really, truly is a one-of-a-kind air personality. In this era when you have three and four and five people doing a morning show together, he did it all by himself. And boy, did he create some comedy gold. Uh, he got the name The Grease Man from back in his days when he was on the radio when he was in college. Back when everybody would say, I'm cooking, you know, like, I'm cooking with the Temptations or cooking with the Four Tops. Well, to show that he was cooking harder than anybody else, he would say, I'm cooking with heavy grease. And he said it so often, his fellow jocks started calling him The Grease Man. And it stuck. <laughs> For many years, Dougie T was the name he used on the air. But then he created this persona, you know, kind of like an older, middle-aged guy, kind of big belly truck driver with a lot of swagger. And over the years, he started using listeners and used their phone calls to help launch him into bits and stories. Grease even created his own language, so nothing was taboo. He could talk about anything he wanted, and his listeners knew what he was talking about. Grease is probably best known for his days at DC 101, WWDC in Washington, where he ruled Washington radio in the 1980s and 1990s. Hey, if you like what you hear, feel free to give it a thumbs up, and also subscribe to the channel too if you like. All right, let's go back with the one and only Grease Man on WWDC, DC 101, Washington. See your Volvo dealer today. The capital area Volvo dealer today for the Volvo 760 Turbo. Sounds really good to me, Lord. Sounds really good to me. It's uh, 18 minutes after uh, 7 o'clock here at DC 101. We're going to stay cool for a while, but then we will shift from the pits anew. As the heat will be back, Jack. We're talking uh, variably cloudy today with a chance of a light shower, temps in the 70s. And the night cloudy with a 40% chance of showers, thunderstorms, low in the upper 60s or low 70s. And then on Thursday, partly sunny, warm, and more humid. Uh, with a chance of rain in the high around 90 again. No, 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 Right now, 68 degrees. And I feel nice. Sugar and spice now. So nice. So nice. Because I got you. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, Charles and I. I wonder what Charles was like on a date, huh? I mean, what was Charles like on a date? We've read uh, those little stories, like that young man who just called with the story in, in Life magazine as to how Charles had numerous affairs, numerous liaisons, as they like to call them over there. Did you have a liaison? Uh, what do you mean liaison? Uh, why don't they give such proper names? Uh, and, uh, just so tawdry liaison. Uh, I, I much prefer skewering. Uh, either way, the outcome was certainly the same. Yeah, I wonder how Charles, did he really make women address him as sir, even in the boudoir? Now that sounds just like, I, 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 I just try to envision that. I just try to envision how that would be. Now have a liaison with Charles, and there'd be a bodyguard at the door with an M1 uh, held at port arms. Uh, there'd be two valets standing alongside the bed with towels uh, draped over their arms at the ready for no false no muscle mop-up. Uh, there'd be a butler standing nearby in case Charles needed anything at all. Uh, there'd be two maids uh, ready to instantly rip the sheets from the bed at the moment of shangri law and to constantly maintain uh, hospital corners on the bed. Uh, I I mean, there would be a gardener there with an electricide container filled with perfume so we could just... <laughs> so that Charles wouldn't have to smell any schwitz in the pits or, God forbid, any, uh, you know... Uh, I mean, what, did, what was it like? <laughs> I'm so excited, Charles will be here shortly. The governess has told me to lie down in a splayed manner and await Charles' arrival. I am so very nervous. I didn't realize he fancied me as he rode along in his fancy chariot. But he did beckon me. And when I arrived, 
and he said he would like to have a liaison. involved. So I am, I still can't believe it. Lie on a bed in Buckingham Mallet, in the buff as it were, waiting for the arrival of the future king of England. Oh, this is so exciting. Wait a minute, I hear, I hear footfalls. Hold my riding crop. Ah, oh, there you are, my darling. Hello, sir. And hello. What did you say your name was again? Madeline. All right, Madeline. Please, first of all, out and in curtsy to me. There you are. Very nicely done. All right, there you are. Like that? I don't like that view. That's a very impersonal view to give the king. You shouldn't show your rump to the king. Now get out of the bloody bed, curtsy again, and slide in on your back. Don't bend over like you're bloody well showing me moon at a, at a, at a high school football game. I'm so, I had no idea you found this up my daddy air repulsive. It's not that I find your daddy air repulsive, Dolly. I mean, if I just disrespect your attitude in which your body for the future king of England, I'll bloody well get out of it. Can't say that, man. Don't make this any more difficult than it is. It's an unsavory procedure at best. I don't even know why I have these urges rising up within me, but I have to handle them, and you can help me handle them. If you don't, you can be on your way to a tweet. Oh, no. No, please, sir. Don't send me on my way, sir. Please. I would so love to have a liaison. All right, then. If you would be as prepared to accept me. All right, Carruthers and Benson, keep the towels at the ready in case she begins to perspire at all. I want you to mop it up. You there at the door, the bodyguard. Make sure there's no one in the hallway. And Samantha, please be at the... To grab my pukas and lift and lower. I've had a very long day on the polo grounds. I've been posting all day long. And as you can tell, my legs are somewhat weak and tired. So, Samantha, if you would please lift and lower my pukas on top of... What did you say your name was? Madeline, sir. On top of Madeline here. All right, here we are. All right, then. God save the queen. Ah, here we are. Straightforward, we're ready. And uh, Carruthers and Benson be ready with the towels. All right, here we are. Oh, here we are. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. Ah, yeah, quite nice. Here, come on, fast, man. The low of me, low of me. Anyway, oh, ho, 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 ho. Bole, bole. Ah. Oh, oh. Are you enjoying yourself, sir? Oh, yes, quite nice. Quite extraordinary, really. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 Sir, you weren't thinking of achieving a Shangri-La, were you, sir? I know we're near reaching the level of that plateau. Shut up, damn your eyes! Did I ask how you were feeling? Not at all! Quickly, Samantha! <laughs> Quite nice, really. All right, then, on your way, miss. On your way, on your bloody way. Sir, I, uh, I was hoping we could take a tea. Take a tea? You, a common street dweller, take a tea with me? <laughs> She's funny, isn't she? Better, better, funny. All right, on your way, will you please? All right, all right. All right uh, chambermaids, change the sheets and burn them immediately. Burn. Very nice, very extraordinary. Hey, there. Uh, Benson, come here a second, would you? While everything ran smoothly, and I commend your efforts to make me comfortable, there is one thing I would like you to research before I have my next liaison. Could you please call our boys in the scientific laboratories and ask them if it's possible for them to figure out a way so that I won't lose my monocle when I achieve Shangri-La? You laugh so much, your sides will ache, your heart will go fit a plan. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah. Stand by, there's more in store from the one and only Grease Man on WWDC FM Washington, DC 101. <laughs> We're having Dex standing by before too long. The big man, number 72. Tell us when you stop it. I'm talking about Dexter. At 730, Dexter Manley joins the ring dang too. And uh, 730 and 8, and uh, we'll be finding out what's going on. And not only that, tomorrow, Dexter Manley is going to be talking with the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers quarterback, Vinny Testaverde. At 8.30, he's going to call him up. We'll wake his behind up. It should be Nido Torpedo. So, Dex, he gets the names uh, here at 101. Good morning. Hello. 
Will in here, buddy? Yes, sir. Hey, man, put me <laughs> off there. I'm uh, from West Virginia, and I got an idea for a story. All right, stand by one second, please. Uh, 101, good morning. Uh, Green. Yeah. You got to help me out, man. What's the matter? I work night shift, right? I don't know if that's right. I'll have to take your word oh, for that's it. That's true. Believe me. Okay. I work night shift. I've stayed up this long just to call you because I know you'll be sympathetic and help me out. What's the problem? I have to see Roger Waters. You do, do you? And I can't. I don't have tickets. Uh-huh. And you have to help me. Well, I might be able to scrounge up a couple of tickets, but there is uh, a stiff price to pay. What's the stiff price? <laughs> What do you think? Well, I got some Vaseline laying around. Yeah. I'll put you on hold. Okay. I'm only kidding. <laughs> no, I don't have any tickets, buddy. We gave them away. Come on, Greg. We gave them away. I'll tell you what. Here's, here's how you do it. Here's how you do it. I'll give you this. At 9 o'clock this morning, I will... Oh, Greg's up be asleep. What do you mean you be asleep? You said you stayed up all night long. At 9 o'clock in the morning, what I'm going to do is, uh, at random, I will say, dial that thing, dial that thing, and uh, if you're lucky enough to get through, I have a pair of Roger Waters tickets for you, okay? Oh, Grease. That's the best I can do for you. I mean, how do you wait, Jack? How do you... I mean, there's 80, 80 zillion people that want to go see uh, Roger Waters, and you call me up and say, you need to go your way. So how do you write? Yeah. What I'm saying is that between 9 and 10 this morning, uh, just stand by, and uh, I will give you a random shot at glory. That's the best I can do for you, okay? Oh, great. That way, everybody has an opportunity. Come on, I'm t- I don't want to hear you crying anymore. I That's- got off work at 1 o'clock uh, this morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. We all hate life. We all hate life for crying out loud. But between 9 and 10, I do have a pair of Roger Waters tickets to give away. It's going to be a great show. We're psyched. It's Sunday night, Cap Center, DC 101, just having a summer party. Why not get Roger Waters to do that summer party up right? Hello, 101. Hey, Greek man. How's it going, buddy? Very well. Quickly, i got to get Dex on. What's All right, it? dude. I'm starting my... Don't call me dude. Buddy. What's that? Uh, I'm starting my police academy training today, my first day, and I wonder if you could tell me what it might be like. All right, stand by. We'll get a lawman on for you. That's no way. I can do a lawman between uh, 7.30 and 8 o'clock. What the hell? You hang on. Make sure you got a clean table of the wall and sack, and we'll be ready to roll. The Grease Man. Bold, proud, and manly. And now, number one in your hearts, and number 72 in the program, here's Dexter Manley and the Grease Man. All right, Dexter. Bye, yep. bye, bye. You sound, you sound bright and shit this morning. <laughs> Yes, up early. Yeah, you need to be. You need to be. Uh, I hear, uh, let's uh, get down to brass tacks here. Bethard says the skins are going to bypass the supplemental draft. He doesn't want to reward players that have violated the rules. What do you think about it? Well, uh, first of all, I think it's good for Bobby Bethard and uh, I guess somewhat for the National Football League to kind of take a stand because, of course, uh, college coaches will lock the NFL scouts out. And my personal opinion is that uh, you know, you have to realize these athletes are, are coming there. Some of them f- are from different part of backgrounds, and some of them necessarily don't have the economics fund to uh, just make it through college. The NCAA have all stated that you, you cannot support a player. So now one of the top prospects at his position, whatever, supposed to be a high-round draft pick, decides to get an agent and, you know, take some money. So I don't think it's the NFL fault. I think that is the uh, it's the college and the place problem. Uh, now I think what they're trying to do is, uh, you know, it, the college coach is trying to protect themselves because eventually if everyone starts doing that, then the college level of performance will go down. Uh, personally, I don't really think the college coaches really care. I think they just care about themselves. But if they did care, number one thing they should be worried about is academics. And the guy can go out and make a good living. He don't have to rob and steal. Players are prepared to strike on September the 15th. Have you been notified or have you voted or anything on it? Oh, yes. There has been a vote taken, and 90% of this football team have voted for a strike. Uh, as, I, as I said, you know, that, that's the sad thing about it. That uh, you know, 90% you know, of the skins voted to strike? Yes. Wow. Unbelievable, man. What about you? You voted. I'm not going to ask you how you voted, but... Uh, yeah. Well, 90% of the football <laughs> team voted. It's 45 guys on the football team, so I guess you're going to have to calculate that up yourself. I guess so, man. <laughs> September 15th, we'll be having live Dax. No. <laughs> yeah. No, we've been watching old movies on Sunday afternoon. And, and by the way, the rescue, uh, this is going to be probably our last day of training camp up in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. We're breaking camp tomorrow morning. 
We headed back to the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area, Northern uh, Virginia. All right, well, we'll be able to get out on the good race and discuss strategy then. <laughs> uh, yes. Bubba Tyler says he's not ruling you out of the opener. Uh, what do you think? Well, you know, uh, I'm not ruling myself out. You know, I take it one day at a time. Right now, uh, things are getting better. I went running in the, in the pool yesterday, and uh, things are better, but... You know, just one day at a time. I'm not going to start projecting things that, that may not necessarily be so. Um, you know, Bubba Tire is the head man. I feel like I'm getting the best medical attention, but, you know, this is my leg because, you know, when I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go. When I'm not ready, I'm not going out there for nobody. I hear Eric Yarber's hurt these days. Yeah, Eric Yarber's a minor. It's nothing serious to be concerned about. The Skins picked up tight end uh, Cliff Benson from the Falcons. Dan Henning knows him. What do you know about him? Never heard of him. Well, that takes care of that question. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can't get out. 90% of the Skins voted to strike. I got Spilkis, Dexter. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Well, I'll tell you what. This strike situation, uh, what, we, what we want, uh, Doug, I mean, Grease Man, it's kind of like, uh, you know, we have a contract. First, you have a contract with the station. That's, you know, when you sign that contract, is guaranteed. You have to honor the contract. Yeah. I have a contract with the Redskins. And, you know, the Redskins can let me go at any time because it's not guaranteed. Uh, if we have players that have been in the league, has family. I have three kids and a lovely wife that I dearly love. And I don't want the people come telling me to let me go. They're not giving me any security. They're protecting themselves. Another thing is that free agency. It's, we don't have a chance to select where we want to go. I mean, it's a lockout. I mean, it's a monopoly for the NFL owners. And now, I just think that the players want what's fair and, uh, you know, Better pension, uh, you know, better, um, you know, most important thing is I, I think that the management council, for what I understand, showed that players doesn't necessarily want to be tested for drugs. That's not so. I think players go out and work in the community and do a lot of different things. Uh, you know, they can test me anytime they want to because I know deep down that I am free. It doesn't matter to me. Clean as a whistle. Clean. Clean. All right, well, tomorrow we're looking forward to you talking testive early at 8.30. 8.30 tomorrow morning, Jimmy. Yeah. And you'll be back at 8.30 today with more on the Skins Lowdown. Okay. Thanks, Dex. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. The Dexter Valley Report has been brought to you by Dash's Menswear. <laughs> it's the Dexter Manley Sports Report with the Grease Man on DC 101. Special effects. The flawed sound. The projection screen. Roger Waters. Plus all the Pink Floyd classics he wrote. Roger Waters, DC 101's 12th Summer of Rock and Roll concert at the Capitol Center this Sunday. And Kurt Gary in the role of Jim, Radio Chaos. Our coverage begins at 3 p.m. from Washington's home of rock and roll, D.C. 101. Yeah, I hope there's no football strike. I hate it when there's a football strike. Yeah, and man, because we usually cook up some chow, logs on the fire. Guys, or, you know, in the early season games when it's still warm outside, good ship grease in the salon. Watching the action and excitement, but no, no, When football's on strike, instead you get it's the Sunday matinee. Gig Young and Ginger Rogers in a madcap wacky to the festival in Falls Church. Give me a break. And it's a net full of jello. Bobby Rydell and back to the beach in Beach Blanket Bingo. You know, you're thinking, geez, I want to see contact. I want to hear Padge popping. Lord, spare me for Sunday matinee. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what gives, huh? We'll talk to Dex. He's, uh, well, 90% of the skins voted the strike, so it looks like, uh, hey, Steve Wright 101. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Reese. How you doing? I need a favor from you, man. What is it? Ever since I called you up, my buddies at work have been uh, trying to get you to do something about moving men, man. Those moving men. Will you tell them I will work it into the repertoire? Hello, one on one. Uh, Grease Man. Yeah. Yeah. You were wondering about uh, veto and salutations. 
Vito and his salutations. Yeah. I wonder whatever happened to him. Oh, uh, well, uh, I just saw a movie recently on HBO uh, in which they're starring in, or not starring, but they have a role in it. Uh, and they play that one song that you played yesterday, too. Really? Yeah. They must be old geezers by now. Oh, uh, they looked uh, not too bad. They, were, you know, appeared to be, you know, upper middle age, maybe. Yeah, I mean, you know, that song was a hit in, like, 1960 or something like that. Yeah, now, this was this movie, uh, I, it didn't have a date on the uh, on the uh, ad about it, but it, it's it's very recent, like, within the past five years or so. Vito and his salutations. Yeah, and they're supposed to be playing again on HBO. Yeah. Uh, you could uh, get it on there. Yeah, I don't have a, I don't have HBO. I've got Showtime and uh, the movie channel. Can you uh, roll the tape on that for me? Uh, Sure. Now you got VHS? Uh, no, I got beta. Well, maybe you could copy it or something. Yeah, like I can. I'll, I'll get it. I'll, I know some bud, 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 bud buddies that have beta. I used to have beta, but it went out of fritz the other day. So yeah, if you would you roll a tape on that for me? Certainly. All right, thanks, buddy. No problem. See you later, Vito and the Salute. I would love to sit at their feet and ask them questions. You know, like like like. Like, like someone would sit at the feet of Segovia and ask him about his music, or sit at the feet of Picasso and ask him about his art, you know? Sit at the feet of Duke Ellington and ask about jazz. I would love to sit at the feet of Vito and the Salutations and ask him how they got the inspiration to take Unchained Melody from the... You never close your eyes anymore. I mean, well, you know, where did they get the idea for... Uh, for, uh, you know, the way they do it. The way they do it. Time go by so slowly. Time to do some bu- 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 to you. What was the inspiration? Huh? St. Vitus dance? What? Yeah, but anyway, we'll find out. When I witness Vito. I've never actually seen doing the salutations. I've just heard the tune and was mesmerized by it. Yeah. I don't know. Sometimes, you know, that can be a bummer actually seeing the people. You know, you conjure a vision. Like the fabulous Thunderbirds. You know, you hear that song, Ain't I Tough Enough? Yeah. Yeah, I've walked ten miles over a hot, cold guy. Bowl, well, then you see the group, and there he is, kind of dumpy looking, you know. Hey, kind of like, hey, what are you thinking, tough enough? Eh? Get out of here. But eh, anyway, so much. I'll be waiting for relief of Vito and the salutation. Seventeen minutes before eight o'clock. I think we'll do some Clinton this morning. Do we dare? Do we dare? Ravage the bimbombes. Those bimbombes. Tell us that I want to do Clinton. Uh, I'll pick you up in a minute. All right, uh, one one. Hello. Hello. Yeah, you got a man on the line. This ain't a grease man. What can I do for you quickly? Oh, what is a grease man? What is that? 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 What about the football strike? Yeah. Well, it's called for September the fifteenth. Whether or not it'll happen, we don't know. The football may acquiesce. Can you say acquiesce? Uh, the football owners may acquiesce to the demands of the players and thus avoid a strike. Man, that stuff ain't right, man. Those fans are the strikes. Yeah, that never happened. Never happened. Never happened. Yeah, you mean if people one day just didn't show up when they were... on the radio, right? Well, on the radio, yeah. Anyway, I got to run. Uh, well, there, there may well be strikes. There may well be. I mean, it's called for the 15th. If nothing changes, if people just dig in their heels, uh, we, the fans, will be squealing like eggs. Uh, so we shall see what gives. Anyway, I'm going to do Clinton for you in a second. Precision tune. I got a lawman coming up. Precision tune. Now listen to me. The way I say it, beating like a goat. Precision tune. Yeah, precision tune will help you out. A car gradually loses oomph. You know oomph? You know the expression oomph? I mean, you're not going to find it in the dictionary. They don't teach you that in English language course. But I think we Americans know the meaning of oomph. And if your car ain't got oomph, you need precision tunes. They'll put the oomph back in it with the dynamometer. The precision team with their state-of-the-art technology that makes tuning easy. Tune nothing, tuning up. Uh, that makes tune nothing. Makes tuning up easy because the precision tune. They get the pros. They do over a million tunes a year. They've doubled their guarantee. Twelve months, twelve thousand miles. You're protected nationwide. You drive with pride. Uh, so put some oomph back in that bad boy. Call ADS one zero zero one. Location nearest you. It's Precision Tune. Uh, they'll have you blowing down the highway at high speed. Love it, life. We're broadcasting almost live from a historic event. The Rosenthal Heroes. Seven Up Play All Day game. Look for details wherever you buy Seven Up. I'm working out there. I work out there. Come on, baby. Hit the flow. Let's wash them all. Yeah, the grease went in charge at the. For short, call us Smeggy Meggy. Yeah, we 
We, we, uh, we, uh, what I'm doing is taking a satirical look at the world. I, I, uh, I don't mean nothing. There are facets of life occasionally, and to me, the, uh, the facet of the uh, of me, and, uh, uh, massively, grotesquely, testosterone laden, uh, and Clint Eastwood, uh, the, ver- the veritable epitome of manhood, uh, the thought that, uh, I mean, you know, it's impossible to picture. I mean, I just couldn't even picture grappling, uh, like, uh, in that illegal manner. <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, I suppose, you know. Knock on the head. Something goes kablooey. Yeah. I mean, something goes on the fridge. Next thing you know. There you are in a Calorama apartment with your tutu on. Singing his song, it had to be you. It had to be you. No other guy can make me so high. It had to be you. Oh, how I feel. Oh, and you make me squeal. Oh, and we make it all. And these are the bow. It's just unreal. Steaming. Uh, what they found out is that she gave me a good reaming. Uh, it had to be you. It had to be you. It had to be you. What a jack What are you crying about, punk? Uh-huh. I'm crying because we just had a zesty session. Well, why are you crying? You got what you wanted. Yes, but I, I hardly felt it at all. Tell me honestly, Clinton. After years of living this way, am I becoming a tad dilated? Well, it's not as good as it used to be, punk. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have dated John Holmes those years. I knew it. He told me all about Nightmare! <laughs> I can't even satisfy myself anymore, can you? I think I need a marital aid. Have you seen? Look, look at this magazine I have here. See, look at these implements. So you could strap this on. I'm not wearing one of those, punk. Well, look at it. Look at the size of this thing. I mean, this would, I'm sure, provide me some kind of. Look at the detail. It's colored in and gnarled and everything. Look, it has nodules, rubber nodules on it. No way, punk. But what am I going to do? I need something to provide me with the gratification that I used to have. Hang on a second, punk. I'll be right back. Clinton! Clinton, where are you going? Clinton, where are you going? Why do you come to the realization that maybe I'm, I'm not the man I used to be? Maybe he's going to go for a younger man, the more elasticity. Where is he going anyway? I can't believe it. Oh, wait a minute. Here he comes down. Oh, oh. I'm back, punk. I got just what you need. You do? Well, oh, bring it in. I want to see. I want to see. I want to see. I want to see. No, I want to see if you like it first. Face the wall, punk. What what he bought. I went down to the construction site, punk. The construction site? <laughs> oh, it's no use. Nothing's ever going to work. I feel so pathetic. Oh, woe is me. with Washington's best jock, the Grease Man. Ooh, daddy, daddy. WDC FM Washington, DC 101.